Hello, I'm Bob Hintz. Welcome to Sports Time, a special on LSC, your local sports channel. I'm lucky today to have Ray Smith with me, athletic director at Bethel High School, and I've known Ray for a real long time. I know Ray when he was taught it in the Hampton system, left and, and went and took over the Hampton Tennis Center. Right. Well, let's go back. When you first started teaching, you were back in the early 70s, is that correct? I uh, taught at Kickatan High School from 71 to 75. Uh, coached football and, and JV baseball there. And then I moved to Phoebus when it opened up in 75, and I was the head varsity baseball coach there. And then I left in the fall of 78. Right. And then you did the tennis for how long did you do that? that I actually of... did two things. I uh, went in business with two other guys and had a ski shop, and that was a wintertime job. And then in the summer, I ran the Hampton Tennis Center. Okay. And you haven't got away from tennis. You still do tennis. Uh, yes, I do. And we'll talk a little bit about okay. that. <laughs> Whereabouts? Uh, I coach the girls' varsity tennis team at Hampton Roads Academy. Uh, this is my 20th season. Uh, we just finished up our fall season. We won our second uh, state championship in a row this past Saturday, and we've won uh, three state championships out of the last five years. So you've kept your hand in the, the tennis. Which yes. Is, that's evidently a, a love of yours. Yes. Uh, when you went to college, and where did you go to college? Went to Emory and Henry College. And played what? At, uh, played football there. And you beat who? <laughs> uh, my sophomore year, we were nine and one and ranked tenth in the nation in small colleges, and we beat Appalachian State. Uh, the last game of the year, it was uh, it was pretty wild at Boone. It had just snowed, and they were they'd gotten all the snow off the field, and it was cold, and then the sun came out. Uh, but it was a great day for a small college of 900 playing a, another college that gave 45 full scholarships and wow. had six or 7,000 students there. Well, that was quite an accomplishment. That, that, that's good. So a lot of people don't know that about you, and that's what we want to do. We want to find out about you, but we also want to find out about what you do as athletic director right. at, at Bethel High School. Now, you would look at, of all your duties, what would you say is the most important and maybe the most time-consuming duty that you have. Uh, that would be uh, doing the master eligibility list because each team has to have a master eligibility list submitted to the Virginia High School League that includes all of its players and there's seven areas of eligibility that we have to check and so that's in the fall that's for every varsity and JV sport in the fall the same in the winter time and the same in the springtime. Okay so that, I mean, and now you have to not only send it to the VHSL, but you, you send a copy of it down to Beth. It, it goes hours. downtown. We have to check uh, a transfer rule, uh, age requirements, scholarship, when they had their last physical, how many classes they passed the preceding semester, how many they're taking in the current semester. Uh, so, so it's it's very it's it's not complicated. It's just time consuming, and you don't want to make a mistake because. It could it could mean having to forfeit a game, right? And and you don't want to. And I don't want my name in the paper for that. <laughs> I can understand that. Uh, now, how did you you got this job when Kozlowski left, which yes. was in the late nineties, ninety seven, ninety eight, somewhere Back around then, that? Yeah. Did you, would you work with Kaz the year before, or did you just come into this job and you had a, 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 a on the job training? How did uh, you learn what to do? I, when he retired, I decided I was going to apply for his job. I uh, interviewed with uh, Dave Pearson right. and uh, hit the hit the ground running. So, so you just kind of figured out what to do as, as you went along, because I know I, I was talking to Colin, uh, Karen Holly. She worked with Trish for a year, right? And then uh, Lee got to work with Leonard Thomas right. for a while. So that they've got they got some. Uh, help and, and what to do, you just kind of took off on this thing on your own then. Yes. So, well, very good. Uh, talk about Leonard Thomas. Now, I know you had a, a heart problem here a couple years ago. Uh, 19 months to be exact. 19 months, okay. And Leonard Thomas, who was had retired, came in and stepped came, in your Came shoes. in and filled in for me, which was, uh, I, I really appreciated him doing that for me. And uh, we did talk uh, after I got out of the hospital, so I still sort of knew what was going on and, right. and was eager to get back, and I actually was back at work in uh, about six weeks. Right. Now, if you look at all your duties, and, and we're not just talking uh, eligibility, but then you, when the winter sports start, all of a sudden now you've got uh, 
contests at your school. Right. You've got uh, people you have to get. You've got to make sure you've got the officials, you've got the security and all that stuff. So does it become more of a, uh, more on you in the winter sport than, than say, in the spring or in the, in the fall? Because Beth takes care of all your football stuff. I mean, you've got to get the kid, kids there, but you don't have to worry right. about the stadium. Right. We, you know, the fall is, well, I have to do a master schedule for all three, three seasons. Right. Uh, and then we do transportation for all, all sports for all three seasons. Winter, I've got to hire my help for basketball games and wrestling matches that are home, whether they're varsity or JVs, and uh, get security. And then uh, I supervise selling tickets. And then once that game is over, we have to deposit the ticket proceeds into the bank, uh, send a check to, to Beth with a ticket report to, to verify that, you know, the number of tickets we sold and the amount of money we deposited balances out. Right. So it, it becomes more more involved during the, the winter sport, I would imagine. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm at school more during the winter because that's uh, 18 nights for basketball, whether it's varsity or JV, and then uh, three or four additional nights for uh, wrestling. All right. So now the, are you there? For all the contests, or if you're not there, you have somebody there. I'm in pretty your much stead? there for for every home activity during the winter. Wow! So <laughs> your wife gets to see you at, at night, and then uh, you? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So you've really gone all out, and and it just but it's the job. Yes, it's what you have you end up having yeah. to do. So uh, now, wh when you look at your your fall, your winter, your spring. How, how, what differences are there besides time consuming? See, winter sports are going to be more time consuming than the right. others. But well, in in the fall, uh, I don't really have to worry about uh, having contact with officials because we don't have that that many sports uh, in the fall. Right. Uh, Winter time, the officials are already set up. There, there are very few cancellations, and if there's a cancellation, it's because of weather, and that decision is made downtown anyway. In the spring, we got baseball, softball, tennis, uh, soccer, and track, and so that involves more of my time of, okay, the weather's bad, the field's going to be too wet. I've got to call the opposing athletic director and tell him we're going to cancel and reschedule. I've got to call the umpires. I've got to call transportation. And then get back with each one of them afterwards and say, okay, we have officials for baseball for tomorrow. Uh, so then I have to, I have to you know, double my calls. Right. So, the, so the spring is, is more uh, involved, especially when the weather's bad. Right. I mean, if we have good weather, it's great. All right. There's no guarantee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. All right, now you, you ordered. You, you got to be concerned with your meet with your coaches, right? And I'm assuming you meet with them during the beginning of their season. Uh, usually meet with all the coaches in the summer, and then before each season starts, I meet briefly with them and say, "Okay, I need your MELs by master eligibility list by a certain day. I need your transportation request forms now." Uh, and, and we've already done the ordering of equipment for winter, so it's more or less, do you have everything that we ordered? Or okay. is there something that you found out that you need that we didn't order? All right, now, how do you choose your vendors? Uh, we've got to go through the, uh, the SWAM vendors, minority owned, right. so that has to go out on bid. And then once we get the bids back, if, if there's a SWAM vendor that's, that's lower, then we go with them. If there's not, then uh, I've got two or three different ones that I deal with that are, that are good and, and uh, you got good good rapport with them, yes. so that, that yes. helps you, right? I know we was over to uh, Bethel earlier this week and got to talk with the uh, field hockey team. These young ladies were ecstatic, first ever winning a, yep. a tournament game and ended up winning the yep. tournament. But a side note to that, the coach beat her sister. <laughs> her sister Co coach right. beat her sister, and she was actually a new coach. We uh, we had a coach uh, on board for the fall, and uh, he decided he wasn't going to coach. So we had to advertise, and it took about a week and a half to two weeks. And then we hired Alicia, and she pretty much hit the ground running, and uh, she had a great year. Yes, she did. And the girls peaked at the right time. Well, and the girls were so appreciative of us for coming yeah. over there. And, and I, I said, we want to highlight you. This yeah. is what we're doing this for, is for the girls. And then we got a chance to talk to the uh, young man, uh, William Brown, who runs
cross country, cross. won the district yep. last year, won it again this year. Uh, did well in the districts or in the regionals in the state. Uh, yep. And he also runs indoor and outdoor. Right. And he kind of, he gave uh, Wobe a, uh, 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 just a glimpse of what he does. He goes over to Mount Trashmore, runs up and down that about yeah. 10 times, comes back over here, goes over to uh, Sandy Bottom, right. runs that, and then goes to Bethel and runs around the track. That's all in one day. <laughs> so, well, you know, to be good, you got to do that. Right. Regardless of the sport, you've got to put time into it. You can't just wake up one morning and say, okay, I'm going to go run the district meet today. Uh, you got to be ready for it. Right. He's, he seems like a fine young man, and uh, and the coach was, was really ecstatic about right. him because he's just a junior. So be and historically, and we've, we've had a good track program over there. Yeah. Uh, well, that's true. That's true. There's always been a decent track program yeah. over there. Uh, I'm going to talk about a little something. You ended up with all this equipment. This was, you talk about a coup. They built, the Centera is going to close it down. They're going to turn that building into a teen center. You got all this equipment. And all of a sudden, Ray Smith shows up. Tell me that story. Actually, I showed up before. Okay. Uh, when I found out that they were going to go into a new facility, I called the manager and I said, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've got a weight room that's, that's not real great, and, and we've done some fundraising to, uh, to improve it. But if, if you've got any equipment that you're either going to donate or that you want to sell, I hope that you would consider us. So I just, you know, every couple of months I just would call him back. And uh, so I think it was uh, mid-November before they closed, uh, he called me and he said, we've got a guy who wants to... Uh, to buy some of the stuff, but then we have some stuff that, that we're going to be able to help you with. And I said, well, you know, anything we can get will be great. So he calls me right before Christmas and says, uh, I've got good news for you. I said, what's that? He says, Christmas has come early. He said, the deal fell through and the guy didn't want any of the equipment. How much do you want? I said, I want every bit of it. <laughs> so we got a, uh, we got a truck and uh, we went over there and started uh, loading it up and bringing it over. And we've got a we now have a 3,200 square foot weight room that, that fills up half of a back gym. And I'm sure it's probably the best high school weight room in the state. In fact, I've had a couple of our kids that have gone off to college that have come back and said, this weight room is better than ours in college. <laughs> and we've got, not only do we have free weights uh, and machine, Cybex machines, we've also got some cardiovascular equipment that we let you know teachers have access to use which oh, from uh, from a health standpoint is good for teachers and uh, it's certainly good for me these days <laughs> well I know you walk I'm a lot. So I'm, I see you walking every now and then while I'm riding my bike so uh, that, that, you know it's just amazing to me how you ended up with all that well, stuff. Was, and you didn't know you was going to get that no, much no I didn't of it. but we were real lucky and uh, you know the, the kids are thankful for it and they take they've taken ownership and uh, take good care of it and we've got a weight room coordinator that uh, assigns the other teams in the off season to use it so Very it's good. uh you got to have one of those to be successful <laughs> Ray appreciate you coming by you're certainly it's welcome been, enjoyed been, it been a pleasure I want to thank my special guest Ray Smith and this is Bob Hintz for sports time good day <laughs>